I had a burnout, totally. I lost, I lost spark, I lost my zest. I was like, you know, just crying all the time, depressed. Ayurveda is a science of common sense. When we start to apply this common sense again, you know, Ayurveda is not dogmatic. I just said, no, something has to change. And this is not just changing the job. This change has to be bigger. I have to step out of this. Hello and welcome to another podcast. I'm really excited to share with you today's guest. Today, I've got a guest called Nancy from Germany, but she actually lives in Copenhagen. And the reason why I know of Nancy, I'm not sure exactly how we met, but the reason why I know of Nancy is because she does a thing called the third eye meditation. Well, I don't actually know if that's actually what it's called, but that's what I've called it. It's called Ayurvedic. So I'm gonna actually ask Nancy all about Ayurvedic, her journey of moving to Thailand and what she actually does. So Nancy, what is a third eye meditation? Let's just get straight into it. <laughs> it's actually called Chiro Dara, Ch to make it clear. Okay. Chiro Dara. Ch oh, you sound, that, that sounds so I lovely. I think we practice that very, uh, Chira very often. Chiro Dara. <laughs> Chiro Dara. Wow, it's amazing. So what is it? Because all I remember is I, I laid on like a massage bed and it was honestly, I'm not taking the mickey out of it, it was one of the best experiences I think I've had. I lay on the massage bed and you pour kind of some warm oil over me and then you just massaged my third eye and neck and I just went into such a deep level of bliss consciousness but obviously I'm not doing it any justice there must be some science and um, spirituality behind it can you tell us all about it yeah so as you explained there's this warm oil flows over your forehead and then over your hair and this actually helps us because it's connected to the nervous system so it really helps us to jump from sympathetic into parasympathetic nervous system. So like, like the one's more stressed and one's more relaxed. The sympathetic is more the fight flight. Yeah. Most of us are in there and it's not always bad. Yeah. Um, but the parasympathetic is the rest and digest. This is where we really connect truly Ooh. to ourselves, where we relax, where we get calm, where, yeah, where we feel more nurtured. Mm. And uh, the massaging I do because we have a lot of, uh, we call it mama points. Mama. Like mama. Mama points. Mama. Similar to acupuncture points yeah. or acupressure points. Uh, they are vital energy points in the face and in the head. They are the most. We have 108. As your mala has 108, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So we have 108 of these mama points in the body. We can stimulate to circular motion or massage to de-stress and relax and nurture or activate and enhance something like digestion or we're working on, you know, eyesight or something with the nose or something. Yeah. So there are a lot of points I'm stimulating and pressing and massaging. Just to, Yeah, just for somebody that doesn't know what an acupuncture point is. If you told me what an acupuncture point was 10 years ago or 20 <laughs> years ago, I'd be like, what on earth are you on about? So somebody might be listening at home. What's an acupuncture point? Okay, this, this is Chinese medicine. Okay. So we call it mama point. But some, most of the people know more acupuncture or acupressure. So mama point is simply a vital energy point in the body. Uh -huh. So there's something, either energy, energy we can activate, Ooh. you know. Or, Getting or, goosebumps. Or down, you know, or, or they're stuck energy so we can act, uh, um, enhance this energy with stimulating it. Yeah. So this energy this that we activate is moving around the body, but sometimes it will get blocked somewhere. Honestly, like if you're at home listening to this, like go and get a third eye massage. Or, <laughs> and like if you're in Thailand, make sure you come and see Nancy and have this third eye massage. Because I remember years ago when I was reading lots of yogi stuff and into my practice and I would go into my meditations and the gurus would just say that like, the third eye, which is the pineal gland, mm -hmm. right? They would say it's like the, uh, the gateway to a higher level of consciousness. And I just found that so fascinating. It's like opening a door to a higher self or to more awareness. And again, these are just words and stories which sound amazing, but the experience is more important for me. So I came to you kind of a little bit skeptic, thinking like I have no idea what Ayurveda is and we'll get into that in a minute. And then I came to you and I just remember laying again on that bed and you're just massaging me. And I opened the doorway to bliss, like, or you opened the doorway to bliss. And I didn't want to come back. I was like, it was the deepest sleep I think I've had. Or the deep, and every time, because I had quite a few deep, sessions. I think 10 or 15 times. 10 or 15 came. sessions. I'm not, yeah. That's my addictive personality. <laughs> yeah, whether it's cocaine or third eye massage, I'm on it. <laughs> but on a serious note, like, this is a lot much higher than cocaine and more pure. But I, I, I came and every session was different. Yeah. Like, why was it so different? Like, it, yeah. I literally went somewhere else and then I'd come back to the body. That's... The only you know, way I can describe it. And the it. fascinating thing is me giving it and observing and being there all the time present. I see it the moment you drop in. I know they got it. Now they're in. You know, and then I see, you know, see you flying or really relaxing or people falling asleep, you know. Yeah. And this is so like, and for me it's bliss. The, the, the bliss you feel, I feel as well. Oh, because lovely. I see like, wow, 
they dropped and now they can relax. Yeah. You know, we have so much overstimulation in life, you know. Social There's media, society. Everything, you know, mm. like our families, expectation, you know. Traumas in the mind. Entrepreneurs, traumas. Yeah. You know, we have want to do so many things and be stimulated of so much things. This is really, my doctor always says, you know, when, when you want to invest in something, invest into Shiradara. This is your anti-stress program. Mm. You know, you know what are you talking about? I'm like, I haven't had one for a while, so I'm going to book actually a, true. I'm booking in a third eye massage if I saw that. <laughs> it didn't come to my new yeah. place yet. No. Oh, you've got a new place? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, um, at One Yoga, that one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Are you for yeah. life? Yeah. Are for life? That's the name of your company. Are you for life? Are yeah. you for life? Are you ready for life? Okay, so again, if somebody's never heard of it, we're talking a bit kind of out there for some people. Again, for me, definitely in the past. What is Ayurveda? I mean, I kind of got an idea of it, but just explain it to me like I haven't got a clue and just like, what does it mean, Ayurveda, you know? Yeah. So Ayurveda is the most oldest, sophisticated, holistic medical system in the world. Mm. It dates back more than 5,000 years of knowledge and wisdom, which I always find impressive. Amazing. You know, when we speak about modern Western medicine, what's that? Yeah. You know, we have something which is so profound, so experienced. Um, and yeah, we call it the science of life. So Ayu means... The science of life. Yes. Mm. Ayu means life. And Veda means knowledge. So we're studying the Vedic scriptures, oh, you know, yeah. where all this ancient knowledge and wisdom is in there for us, downloaded yeah. from, you know, the masters, the rishis. Yeah. Um, and Ayurveda is simply a natural system. So when we start to sink in back to nature, then we understand this beautiful science because it's simply coming back to your natural flow, mm. sinking back into the harmony of nature, mm. of the security and rhythm. You know, mm. there's again, when we speak about so much things going on out there, you know, people get trapped into bad habits and lifestyles, staying up late, you know, mm. waking up late, eating Watching too... Netflix, drinking watching wine, ne Doritos. Exactly, yeah. eating all this, you know, yeah. crap food and treating themselves bad. But just when I, when I work with my clients, sometimes it's the simplicity of just sinking them back into the circadian rhythm. Into What's the rhythm... The, so what is the circadian, circadian, circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythm that? is the rhythm of day and night, mm -hmm. the 24-hour rhythm. Mm -hmm. So simply we can say sink them back into the natural rhythm. Mm. When is the sun rising? It means actually when the birds start to sing, we have them a lot here, right? Like we are yeah, very connected here, like, to the bird. Bird. I'm like, it's four o'clock, lads. Like, give me a chance. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> but it's amazing because you want to wake up, right? This is, I mean, you actually don't need an alarm. When the bird yeah. starts to sing, it's actually for our essence, for our system, uh, the message to wake up. So we're waking yeah. up with the sun. We're settling down with the sun. Yeah. You know? And when we follow, or we are, no, we, our digestive system is the strongest when the sun is the highest. We call the sun or the fire Agni in Ayurveda. This Agni our, means? The digestive fire, or just simply fire. Agni yeah. is a Sanskrit word for fire, but in Ayurveda it's the digestive fire or the metabolic fire. Mm. So this is, the, this is simple connection to nature. Yeah, and I, and I love that. I've got a friend who we've had on the podcast, and he's very talks a lot about research, which is amazing. I'm just very left, uh, very right brain. I'm a bit more kind of floaty, you know, and creative. And, and so is he as well. But when we talk and we talk about, it's always about like science and the stats and the statistics. In my brain, I'm always like, yeah, but it's common sense. Like, wow. So just go to, just Brad, go to <laughs> thank you for bringing this up. And I tell you something, you asked me what Ayurveda is. And actually, this is not written in the books. This is studied from my doctor. Ayurveda is the science of common sense. Science of common sense. This I is love actually, that. you know, if you really want to understand this and bring this into a tangible, I actually learned this word from you, a tangible, <laughs> tangible, <laughs> tangible thing. Way. It's really Ayurveda is a science of common sense. When we start to apply this common sense again, yeah. you know, Ayurveda is not dogmatic. Many people say like, it's dogmatic, it's too many laws, it's too many roles, mm. it's too much discipline. No, it's actually showing that you haven't understood it. Yeah. You have not studied it. You have not under understood this ancient brain they had already 5,000 years. Spirit is essence, this right? This is essence yeah. and everything is nature. It's the five elements. All the foundation of Ayurveda is the five elements. If mm. you understand the five elements and if you understand that everything has a quality which we call guna. Everything you consume through your five senses, yeah. Yeah? everything out there has a quality. Mm. And this quality has an effect on you. Mm. If you, for example, put oil on the, 
on the floor, yeah. the effect will be it's slippery. Yeah. And the same happens in your body. Yeah. This is common sense. Yeah. You know, we don't need to ask anyone what should I eat? When should I eat? You gotta just tune in. Yeah. When when should I drink? Yeah. You know, how much yeah. should I drink? And and you think, sorry to butt in, but yeah. I'm so passionate about this topic as well myself. Yeah. Like common sense is just not common practice for no. a lot of people now. No. And do you think that's because and we'll get into your personal story in a moment, is because we are living in this nine till five, everything is like that, and then you do overtime and then you do stay up late and you don't go to bed on the right times. And again, what we're actually talking about is so obvious and so simple. Like drink more water, get out in the sun, you know, and then you know, so but do you if it's like it's not common practice no. because we've just been so distracted or taken so into the left brain or so far cut away, off. cut off from this cut source off. and this essence, which yeah. that is my passion. Like I feel so sad when I see that. Mm. I'm like, because that is so beautiful, that essence and that source. And when you feel that, it's obviously going to tell you, look, you're eating too much or go to bed early. It's like it, the, the awareness will just come through. But if your yeah. brain is so busy with what's going on in the media and the news and stuff and we are distracted, it isn't common sense is it really? Because you can't hear that. Again, exactly. me 20 years ago, I wouldn't have a clue how to hear myself and connect to nature. I thought nature was boring. Same. It's not me. I'm not born as yeah. an Ayurvedic. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, Unfortunately. Which brings me on to like, how on earth did you become an Ayurvedic third eye massage lady? It's just talking <laughs> a lot of common sense. Because from knowing you a little bit, I know that you were brought up in Hamburg, yeah. in Germany. Like, Tell me how on earth did you get from there and what you were doing before you became this mystical goddess that massages my third eye and takes me to another consciousness. <laughs> Not only you. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'm born in the east part of Germany, in Magdeburg. Okay. And I moved uh, to Hamburg and there where I spent 10, 12 years of my life before I left Germany 10 years ago. It's exactly 10 years ago. I just turned 40 actually last week. Oh, we need to get another coconut on the table for that, right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Yeah, I was working. I was working as a key account manager in corporate. A what? A key account manager Which or is... a sales rep. Okay. Wow. You know? Yeah. Uh, actually, in a very different field. Like we were selling, or my company I was working with was selling mobile accessories. We were actually the first sold the iPhone accessories to this time when iPhone so came. So you, you was in an office on the phone sort of selling? No, I was actually not in an office, luckily. I was driving around. I actually had to drive like 70,000 kilometer a year to just drive from area to area, from client to client, mm. from market to market. We were working with a big electronical market, just very masculine. You know, this was a very masculine field. And on one point, first of all, I slept maybe 10 or 12 days at home. You know, the rest I was in hotel. I was traveling. I was like all in business, like very, very business oriented. Yeah. What PETAs are, and I'm still am I, but in a softer and gentler way. But it just worked me to ruin. It wasn't me. Like a burnout. You had a it burnout. Was, yeah. I had a burnout. Totally. I lost, I lost spark. I lost my zest. I was like, you know, just crying all the time, depressed. Mm. Even I don't like to use this word, but there was no meaning in my life getting up anymore. And I wasn't that success, successful anymore. And I just knew I have to change something in my life. Also, I was suffering from eight months constant headaches and I'm not a headache person at all. So I just knew something has to change. Mm. And then what happened is, Today, I call it spiritual questions. I didn't know it to, at this time, really arises. Is this my, my meaning of life? Is this what I want, where I want to is be my whole life? Is, yeah. is it all what it is, you know? And I figured out, like... How did that question come to you? Like, I get what you... It's the, it's the wake-up call. It's the nudge, whatever. But what, was you in your car driving? Was you in the shower? Well, like, how did that just... Guys, I know you're enjoying the video, but I've got a quick question for you. Are you okay with that monkey mind being a monkey? We've all got this voice inside the head, all voices filled with self-doubt, criticism, judgment. But most people don't understand how important it is to master that monkey mind. So look, if you've got a monkey mind or a voice that is just busy inside your head and it never seems to shut up, I know exactly how you feel. And thankfully, I found meditation about 20 years ago. And so, I have an amazing opportunity for you. It's the Bodhi Meditation Teacher Training Program. This 10-week program is designed to share with you eight Bodhi meditations. And the amazing thing about these meditations is that they are scientifically proven to help you reduce stress, reduce anxiety, uplift your mood, boost your energy. In other words, create that kind of lifestyle 
that energy and that health and that happiness that most people crave. Over the course of 10 weeks, I'm gonna be your meditation coach. And at the end of this course, you're gonna become a certified Bodhi meditation teacher. That means that you can coach people one-to-one, you can work from anywhere in the world, build online courses, or even teach meditation at yoga retreats or anywhere you decide. So click that link below and together, will open up your heart so that you wake up feeling positive and literally this buzz for life. The link is below. Now you can get back to your video. Have an amazing day. Something like this, I think. Mostly when I'm in the car because now I'm on my motorbike. I get these insights, you know. It's like when I move somehow, then this question comes. And I saw myself more and more enjoying um, appointments I had with my clients where I had meaningful conversation I even mm. didn't make any money but you know I was so fearful forfeit of the conversation mm. I said okay that's it I mean I don't get out of bed I don't feel myself anymore you know got myself in a toxic relationship lost a very dear person to myself and I just said no something has to change and this is not just changing the job what many people do you know mm. it's like this change has to be bigger I have to step out of this and then how on earth did you get to Koh Phangan? we were living on a tropical island in Thailand I've known you for a few years like how did you go from that to that like, did you just <laughs> so, jump on a plane and get here or did yeah have, what people do right yeah but did you have like any doubts or insecurities about it did you second guess it because a lot I think the reason why I'm saying that what we're passionate about on this podcast is to show people that you've got a really lovely energy and a message to share with the world yeah and you've also created a very big leap from the matrix, let's just call it. You've yeah. escaped some kind of nine to five and you got here. And it, it, a lot of people it deny that voice. They yeah. deny that common Absolutely. sense and they kind of fight against it because we've been brainwashed to ignore our spirit, if I would say. So did you have any of that? Did you go, or did, was it like a clear, yes, I'm getting on a plane no, and, no, and no, then no. it all worked out perfect? It was a process, yeah. of course. It so, was a process of noticing, okay, of accepting there is something going wrong here. Yeah. And if I go on like this, I just, you know, I don't know where I go, you know? And I, even I was so low, I, I needed to take myself first again. So I had moments of what what do I do, stepping out, and then I call it actually my eat, pray, laugh moment. <laughs> Amazing. And I have it in front of, I can't really describe you. I was sitting in my home office, couldn't focus at all. Nothing came out. It was just blank. And it was a beautiful day. I opened my balcony door. The, the sun came in. I lied and watched eat, pray, laugh. And mm-hmm. we all know eat, pray, laugh, right? I don't <clears throat> need to explain it. She goes to Bali, you know, meets this guru. I, just, I literally just saw a photo on Instagram of some lady in Bali and she's got the title and she's reading the book and it was like, classic but carry on yeah Yeah, and then she goes to India you know on a journey and in this moment you I mean you you call it the goosebumps moments Mm. right I really had this deep moment of this is I need to go I need to I need to go on this journey I need to travel I need to go to Thailand and obviously obviously there were things before friends told me about Thailand you know I got like inspired I get sparks because I was always a big Africa fan so Thailand Asia was far out for me but something led me to Thailand mm. to Asia and this moment this eat pray love moment was there it was there eat pray love moment and it, it was there and it never left me it was mm. Clearly, and of course there were doubts, you know, mm. when I prepared everything and, you know, like prepared to supplement my apartment, to... Quit your job, obviously, I guess. Quit my job, yeah. you know, like prepare... Friends, leaving your friends and moving... Leaving up. friends, saving some money, get everything sorted, you know, like insurance and what, what things you have to pay and don't need anymore, like yeah. get this all yeah. sorted. And yeah, quitting my job was the last. And of course, when I drove to my company and had a very good relationship to my bosses, I cried, you know. But when I went out, there was no coming back. This is my way. This is my way. So you don't regret it? No, (laughs) I never. I mean, this moment when I stepped on the plane, my mom um, brought me to the airport in Hamburg on the 7th of March, 2013. Um, Of course, there'd been a day before I was like, shit, what I'm doing here. But there was no going back. And when I left, there was no no regret, not a single, single um, second. I I thought I did something wrong or nothing. I, I love that. I just as I'm listening to you, I think a lot of people that we're going to be interviewing are having an eat, pray, love moment. You know, we might call it a wake up call. We might, you can even call it a rock bottom. And mine yep. was a rock bottom. Yeah. You know, I was in prison. And it was, definitely wasn't an eat, pray, love moment. <laughs> you know, it was the complete opposite. But it was a rock bottom. And I think that I would like to share with anyone listening, and maybe you can give me some more insight. Like, actually, sometimes those rock bottoms, sometimes those crappy jobs that were in a, a death of a friend or a loved one, or you know, an addiction that really gets you, or whatever, it's just a burnout. You know, anything that it can be. It's actually a gift in disguise. It happens for you. It's for a reason. I it's think never my friend, happens to you. Yeah, it my, happens my for friend you. Cody said on a podcast 
that the universe loves you yeah. and it wants us to, we're just like, we are nature. This is why I think it's so common sense. We just, we forgot that we're nature yeah. and we're just meant to grow towards a light. Whatever you want to label the higher power, it's just light, right? We just want to grow and it's the, the universe is well-being and it's positivity, it's pure positive energy. And sometimes I think those, you don't see that because you're depressed, you're addicted, you're burning out, you're crying and you're in a job that pays good money because you're living in a exactly. society. Yeah. But actually it's like, a, it's a gift. It's like, oh, wow. Why did you listen to that? And maybe 50 of our friends might not listen to that. Like, I, mean, I always question, like, why did I hear that and go off on this epic adventure? And now I'm here, I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to share this with everyone. When somebody might hear that voice or they're in a rock bottom, and I don't know the answer, I'm just asking, why do they not follow that and have the neat pray you love moment? Why do they continue in that cycle of suffering? Is it not their time or...? Yeah, it's a difficult... Or is it a difficult question to answer? I mean, in Ayurveda, we say we are all unique individuals, mm. you know, and we have our past and um, some have the strength and the courage, you mm. know. Um, I had nothing to lose, actually. You know, mm. there was no family or anything and I knew... No, I probably didn't knew this moment when I left, I can just come back. But there was, no, there was a deep trust. There was a deep trust that Ooh, everything yeah. works out. I actually, now I remember, there was something that I asked myself, I said, okay, whenever I doubt, I asked myself this question, what is the worst thing can happen to what me, is right? The worst, worst thing, thing mm. happened to me or can happen to me, you know? And then the answer internally came, you go back. Mm. You go back and uh, work again. Yeah. You know, like like or if you lose your apartment, you go to your parents and mm. start again. There was this deep grounded trust. And when I sometimes lose this, as we all have moments, yeah, you know, yeah, I have a practitioner, a meditation teacher, we all have up and downs. Yeah, you know? it's life, right? But then I call up on this trust, what I have from the moment I left, or probably I always had it in life, but mm. now I can call up on it, you know, and I can anchor myself in it. So, and this is it. That's that what uh, what brought me there. Just go, go. Yeah. And so I it's said, like a voice inside. Or it's like a, a voice feeling. inside. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Was you like into meditation and Ayurveda no. massages or anything like that before? So you no. was not. Into I was any a, of this. a high business woman. I did wow. gym and you know, like this whole masculine thing yeah, and stuff yeah. like this. But I know, but yoga was on my bucket list. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. has to come, and it came. So that was my way into Ayurveda as well. But yeah, no, it wasn't really into that. But I always. Where and are I'm a very intuitive person. Yeah. I'm Pisces. Yeah. And Pisces are very sensitive, very, very open to spirituality. Mm. So there was always my friends always asked me, Nancy, should we do this or not? Should we jump on the train without ticket or not? Will they check us? <laughs> I said, let me tune in. <laughs> like this, let me tune in. No, let's go without ticket. <laughs> you... And this is like me. This is yeah, my intuition. That's, you, that's your, you feel that. So that's a good point. Like you mentioned the word spirituality. What does spirituality mean to you? Spirituality is simply studying yourself, getting mm. to know yourself better, you know. It's this pramasharya, but it's not this absence of, you know, intimacy. It's really the self-study, becoming aware. For me, actually, spirituality is nothing more than becoming aware, mm. opening up my awareness. And this is what Ayurveda invites us as well. If we are not aware, we cannot observe what's happening around mm. us. We cannot observe there is a quality that makes that a fact. You know, when I'm aware, I know... What a fact happens when I do certain things, mm. when I eat certain things, when I do certain things, when I go in into an environment, is it what has what a fact is that? Mm. Yeah? Mm. Spirituality is self-study. Self-study like, and becoming aware. Yeah, I love what Anthony DeMello says. He wrote a book called Awareness, and he says spirituality is waking up. And and to me, that's what awareness is. Yeah. It's like you until you're aware of your addiction, it controls you. Until you're aware of the burnout, it's going to keep on happening. Once you become aware of it, then you're in control. You might not change overnight, but then you can go on a journey and start changing, you know? Exactly. So I think uh, the story that you've just mentioned to me, which is beautiful, and thank you so much for sharing, is like if you break that down into steps, step number one, I was aware that this is shit. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not happy right now. And is this all my life is going to be? Step number two, tune in to some kind of trust and, and, and yourself. Step number three, even though there's probably fear and doubt and people might say, don't do it, like take action and, and follow that intuition. And then about you, but I don't trust the voice in my head. And I've got a lot of voices in my head. You know, I, I love seeing when I'm deluded or I'm lying to myself or I get something completely wrong. I'm like, whoa. But in my head, that was so right, you know? And that's like deconstructing the ego, which is a completely different story. 
that the voice that I love listening to is the intuition. And yeah. it's not like a language. It's not like a... Sometimes it's a voice, but it, it's just more of a knowing. It's a trust. It's like, yeah, it's oh, f- yeah. okay, yeah, I'm going to follow you. And, and it seems to work out when I don't listen to it and I listen to these little monkeys yeah. in my mind. Um, it doesn't always work. Like, even doing this podcast, it was more of a... Like, in my mind is like, oh, I don't want to be doing getting out there and doing all this stuff and I get nervous. But it's just something kind of like, wow, we've got to share these positive messages with people. Exactly. If we can inspire somebody to make one person listens to this and has a third eye massage, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or they become an Ayurvedic practitioner. Or they're like, oh, wow, Nancy's story is amazing. I'm burning out. I'm not happy in my job. Let me book a flight to somewhere completely different or just have a break, you know? Yeah. So that's the voice that's calling me to do that. And like, yeah. is that the same thing? It's the voice that called you to get you to where you are to the Ayurveda do you, yeah. do you feel like you're destined to be an Ayurvedic third eye yeah, massage lady I am yeah. I, I, I think I have that in my previous life or something you know it's yeah. really in me I mean even I'm not born in that ancient wisdom um, but it just comes naturally and I still have to study you know it's not oh, like there's time. a lot to yeah. study but let me add something to the spiritual thing. It's also because you have the Bhagavad Gita there, you know? Mm. It's like, I've not read it, it's just for show. <laughs> All of the books in this house. I've got hundreds of books and I've not read none of them. But what, no, what is the main message of the Bhagavad Gita? Is change your thoughts. Yeah. Change perspective. Yeah. You know, and this is, this is what, whatever the voices in our mind, they are there. It doesn't matter how much we, we meditate or not or mm. how knowledgeable we are about healing mythologies or whatever. It's always in this moment where it gets struggling or whatever is there is, Am I able to change my perspective? Mm. Or is there a different perspective I can can look at? When you say perspective, I would sort of say like, you mean story, perception. Story, thought, feeling, yeah, yeah. everything. The way you're looking at something. Yes, yeah. yeah it's I, not just looking. It's the when this when this starts to, to run here, mm. you know, or you, you're being, let's say there was a situation you've been triggered with, you mm. know, and you fall into your old patterns of, mm. you know, frustration or rush or anger or whatever you would normally react to it, you can pause and say, is there a different perspective to it? A different way of looking at it. A different thought, a different way mm. to look at it. And this actually, since I practice that more and more, mm. it's yeah. like, wow, it gives me so much ease and, and relief. It, and it creates so much less drama and stress exactly. because like, I love taking full responsibility for everything, even if like, sometimes, oh, that's not my problem. But I'm like, yeah, but it's the story in my head that's going to create the problem. Eckhart Tolle says it's, um, the problem is not the problem. The problem is always what you think about a problem. Yeah, exactly. So shit happens, exactly. you know, stuff is going on. Yeah. But everybody knows there's something going on in the world, right? But it's more your story that creates your suffering. So you're saying change your perspective or change your story, you know, whether it's a drama or a problem or even actually, I'm really scared to go here, but it could be the best thing that ever happens to me. Go here, take that adventure. Also, yeah. And, you know, Deepak Chopra, I don't know, you know him. It's also one well-known Indian, American mm. Ayurvedic doctor or wrote a lot of books and he says um before you change anything you have change your software before you change your hardware oh nice so first you have to change here you know the application to healing when you have a disease many people are very um they're holding actually on they want to heal but they're identifying the story on their story on their illness on their not feeling well you know on their Mm. victimhood yeah and that and that's sorry to bite but that is not i wouldn't say that's an individual thing i think that's a a, a collective consciousness of like why it's called an ego death yeah you don't want to let go of your story you don't want to let go of your problems even though it's painful and you might be doing some crazy stuff but it gives you a sense of identity and i think the scariest thing for a human being to really wake up to and go oh my god i'm not who i thought i was yeah i'm not who my parents programmed to be or society is telling me what to do I don't even know who I am. And I've been on a spiritual journey and had loads of awakenings. That to me is so scary. And now I understand why so many people are a bit afraid of it maybe Mm -hmm. or going on that journey. Because when you see that you're not who you think you are, you're like, well, who am I then? Now now what do I do? And you're in this kind of no man's land for a little while. And then you start creating yourself and become a third eye lady or a meditation (laughs) dude on podcasts or a cameraman like Antonio. (laughs) But at the beginning, there is some kind of wobble. I call it the wobble of awakening. Yeah. And it's a little bit scary, right? Yeah. Or not for you. I mean, that's just my perception. No, it is scary sometimes. As deeper we go and as more we unlayer and more we understand, sometimes it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, if you tap into that deeper level of understanding yourself and... Yeah. I'm not speaking about enlightenment or anything, you know, but... Just common sense again, right? Common sense. Like, if you feel crap, 
have a look at it and change yeah. it. Don't go and take loads of drugs. Don't stay up all night. Yeah. Don't keep having, you know, doing all of these thousands of distractions because it never you know gets an escapism. You know what the society is? Yeah. It's pure numbness. People just numbing them everywhere where they go, you know, either it's through loud music. Go in each restaurant now, you know, we are busy now. They're just numbing themselves with loud music. Yeah. Hi, I'm coming there to relax, to eat in a peaceful manner, to have a nice conversation. I don't need that loud music. Then yeah. we're having a beer, then people, not me, <laughs> not us, uh, you know. Oh, no, I just had a beer and a line of Coke before the, before the, <laughs> before the podcast. <laughs> I'm high. Um, the, you know, they're having beer, you know, then they have a cigarette, you know, now they have joints all day long, yeah. you know. But we it's also want to... It's 100%. As we say that, though, we want to remember, well, I don't know about you, so, like, I was those people. I don't want to create that separation of these... You know, for me, I always look at it, like, if I get anger or, like, the other week I got a little bit sick, I'd never really get sick, but I had the flu. And I just, literally, for two days or three days, I was in bed and it was crazy. And then I had this suicidal voice coming up mm. in my head and I'm like, wow, I haven't had that for, like, over a decade. Like, it's crazy. And I've had my fair... Everyone sees me positive and like... Mm. But I've had my fair share of, like, almost taking my own life. And so that came up. But what was so beautiful in that, it was my teacher. And because now I've got years of meditation and awareness, it may be... I'm going to do a whole podcast on, on like, men and suicide or, or anyone, really, yeah. not just men. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But what I got, the reason why I'm sharing this whole thing is because, like, it, the way I'm seeing, like, Alcohol or addiction, loud music, separation, suicide, depression, unhealthy like lust and all these sexual desires. It's some kind of energy. I don't want to say entity, but it's some kind of pool of consciousness which kind of goes around humanity. And it's like somehow we tune into it or we get trapped into mm -hmm. it. I know this is a mad out theory, but it was like it was so like a cloud was going over me. Mm -hmm. And I listened to it and it was going on, like suicidal, worthlessness, what's mm. the point? And I was like, holy crap. And then it made me so sad for like, I've known people that have taken their own life. Like they didn't know that that was going past and it would just float mm. off. Like they then went and acted on it and now physically they're not here. Yeah. And it made me really feel inspired to want to kind of understand this more. Because I did, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, now I'm a vegan or now I'm a yogi. and It's like, well, wake up, everyone. And I was so passionate about waking up, but I feel like I came from the wrong energy. Now I feel like I've got, now I've softened a bit more of love and compassion. I was like, that there is not who you are. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going through an addiction or a, a depression, yeah, again, I don't want to label anything mm -hmm. or suicidal thoughts, that is not you. Yeah. Like you are what you're, this absolute light or this Ayurveda bliss bubble, that, that's who we really are. And somewhere, I don't even know where this has come from. I don't even know why it's there. Like, I would never identify with that. I would mm. never label myself, that's who I am. It's like, but I never had that awareness years ago. And it was who I, I was and I acted because of it. How would you describe that from a spiritual Ayurvedic kind of like, what would you say about that? Like, like this experience you had? Or yeah, well, like not, this, yeah, because again, this labeling. No, no, no. This, this kind of like energy that comes through yeah. us as humans. And again, then it's like, for example, I work with a lot of people who have anxiety. Yeah. But their language, just, yeah. yeah, their language is my anxiety. Exactly. And I'm like, the first you're step, not, I was like, anxiety. you're not anxiety. No. But there is, a, not yeah. saying that there's not a physical feeling there, but there's something going on, but mm. don't label it and then identify with it and now it's your story because you're really trapped. Yeah. That, that wasn't my suicidal thinking. Yeah. It was there. I don't know where it comes from. I'm not really bothered, but I, you allow it to then flow off. I would say don't identify with it because it's not you. How would you sort of say it like in an Ayurvedic spiritual way? Yeah. So first, and then give me a massage on my forehead after. <laughs> first, we are not our mind and we are not our body. Mm -hmm. you know, this is a vehicle, our subtle body. A vehicle. Oh, I love that. Choose to live in. And when we understand this, you know, whatever comes in, whatever thought, you know, I was recently suffering as you from suicide, which a lot of pain in my body. I woke mm. up and was just in pain. And this is struggling, you know, for us, mm. like identifying, we should like, why, why we still have that thought? I'm a meditation teacher. Yeah, why? why? I, yeah. I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I cannot have pain in my body. Yeah. You know? And this is when we get trapped in this um, identification, you know. Mm. But when I learned through so studying the Bhagavad Gita, that yes, this is my body. My body holds this pain, mm. but that's not me. Mm. I am not in pain. This body is in pain. The same as your mind had that suicidal yeah. um, thoughts, yeah. but not you. Yeah. Your essence, your subtle body, this, not your soul. You're we beyond, don't beyond body, yes. you're beyond thinking. You, you are fine. You mm. were just in a moment of weakness, of feeling sick, mm. you know, and probably something was missing or the body goes through a process. So we are getting into that state. Yeah. But then when, because we are doing this work, you know, we are able to say, okay, 
stop when I get an anxiety. Say, okay, welcome, welcome anxiety. It's okay, mm. you know. Invite it in for a coconut. Yeah, Come invite, in. inviting yeah. in, check in. Actually, what's going on? Why I'm feeling anxious at the mm. moment? It's just a thought. It not just comes. Mm. You know, people say, I feel this. This, this just this feeling. I don't think anything. No, there is never a feeling without a thought. So you're saying the thought will trigger it? Yes. And because some people get into it almost instantly, they don't even see that there's a thought, right? Yeah. Or something triggers you. You you take something from your five senses, you know, and it comes. Or the in. unconscious stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, or the memory of the past or something. Mm. You know, but it's not you. And when we go into that, people say like, how can you do that? No, you can do that because you don't say. It's it's my body. It's the body. Yeah. It's the mind. I say this with life. It's like it's not my life. It's like you are you're you. There is life. You are life. Like it's not my life. It's like I'm just nature. Yeah. It's just going through. So you keep saying that, which is beautiful, and I'm so on the same path as you. But who who, who are you then? If you're not the body. <laughs> you're not the mind. You know, like, just an atom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally right. Because this one, like, this is like completely right out there. Sometimes I go for a poo. Right, yeah. Yeah. and I turn around, and there's like some poo in the toilet, and I flush the toilet. Bear with me, and then I'm like, that was in me, that was in me. Now it's left me, right? And then I know that I'm not the stories in my head because they change. We're not even the people that started this to 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago, right? And then I also know that I'm not the feelings because they're impermanent. The anxiety will come and they go. So then, who are you? Like, we're not all the things that are inside us because it disappears. You're not the physical body. So then, my question is, who are you? I mean, you're still living this life in the physical body. What is? You know? What, what is it? The life. Yeah, well, what is this thing that's in the body? Yeah, the subtle body. Okay. The subtle. What, the what does subtle, that mean? This, 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 this is the memory. Because often, you know, they're saying it's the soul, you know, which mm. travels. But um, it's actually, it's the subtle body. You know, whatever this is, we cannot really describe it, but there's a memory in the subtle body. And this yeah. subtle body, when, when this physical body leaves or finishes this life, the subtle body goes out of this physical yeah. body. Yeah. And then it goes on. You know, this is when Would you say, say energy or consciousness? Or you yeah, think so you call it consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. I do a meditation where I welcome death, or I've done it in the past, I don't really need to do it anymore. And, it, and it, it's just like, well, there's nothing wrong with death. It's like inevitable, right? So I think it's a good thing, a positive. And then I'm like, well, whatever this subtle body or this consciousness or before the poo, <laughs> you know, before this physical thing that we call Brett Moran on a podcast and Nancy, like that was there before I became the sperm and came the Brett. Yeah. And it's still going to be there once we have our last breath. Yeah. And it's just set me free so much of seeing, wow, this is such an adventure. We're going to have our ups and downs and we go through it. We might not know. We call it subtle body energy. People might call it God. You know, you can call it exactly. anything that you want. Yeah. But it's still going to be there when this little like movie is over exactly. for us. Exactly. Like. So the question is then, how do people really, because that's so far out there and I love it practically throughout your life through would you say Ayurveda would just help people really enjoy and get to understand their anx the anxiety where they get to in make these better choices listen to this intuition you know day to day how how do we kind of help people yeah I mean of course th through Ayurveda which is my profession or my passion um, I, I didn't notice that you was passionate about that <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell just right? a little bit by the way we love to talk about poo as well <laughs> Ayurveda <laughs> really yes yeah. so anyway um to, in Ayurveda, we're helping people to understand this body or, you know, their themselves in totality through the mm. lens and through the Ayurvedic language, which is called dosha or your body constitution or your body type. Mm. And this body type has different elements and you have a proportion of different doshas and different elements. And as more we are learning this and we're learning the qualities, exact now the qualities coming in again, mm. um, what we are made of and what are predominantly, you know, influencing us, we are learning what is actually good for us and what not. Mm. But Ayurveda not just works on a physical level. It works also on the mental, on the emotional, on a spiritual and social level. Energetic, everything, yes. right? Yeah. So the four aspects of health actually are physical, mental, spiritual and social. Only if that is in balance, yeah, yeah. then we consider someone healthy. That also means we have to work on all of the four aspects. We cannot just, if there's a symptom, I don't feel well, you know? Yeah, yeah okay, I can heal the symptoms. I work on this. But yeah. I also have to understand the mind. I have to understand the mental state of it's a person. all connected. Where are they? When yeah. there are a lot of anxiety, of course, that manifests in the body as mm. well. You know, where are they socially? Are they trusting life and themselves? Because social health is trust. Mm. And nothing else is 
anxiety, the lack or the cause of anxiety is a lack of trust, mm. a lack of trust in yourself, a lack of trust in your capacity, a lack of trust in people you're around, your partner, your kids, your family, your, your work environment, whatever, your government, you know, the country mm. you're living in. Mm. This is... To sink into trust, to heal. Yeah, eat and trust every day. Even you got cheated, even you got disappointed. My mm. doctor always said, eat a good amount of trust every Ooh. day. As much you should eat good food. You're yeah, vegan, like, you know, so like you love food. your vegan food. To put, you know? so put a dollop of trust in my plate. Exactly, yeah. and laugh, you know. But, and, again, I mean, again, I'm so on this path with you. That's so difficult for people that have had abusive relationships that have been um, they're, they're trapped and locked away in COVID. You know, the government's kind of stitched them up or, or you know, they've just, they've denied their own voice and they've lost trust in themselves. Mm -hmm. Where would you start trust then? Like, how could I start trusting myself if I don't have no trust? I've just watched this podcast. I'm like, well, okay, where do I begin? Close my eyes, meditate, go I for a third eye massage. Hello, you amazing viewer. I hope you're enjoying this video and I've got some really exciting news for you. You know that moment when you're reading a book and it just ignites that light bulb moment for you? It wakes something up inside you, that passion, that enthusiasm, or that spark for life. Well, the big announcement is my new book, Awaken Your Spirit, is ready for either pre-order or depending on when you're watching this book, you can order your copy right now. Over the last couple of years, I've poured my heart and soul into writing Awaken Your Spirit. I don't know about you, but sometimes that voice inside the head just never seems to shut up. Well, this book shows you a step-by-step -step process on how to really close your eyes and go inside and separate from this monkey mind and this never-ending conversation that goes round and round and round. Whether you're seeking inner peace, you're looking to recharge your batteries, or you want to feel more grounded and in harmony with life, this book has got something for you and it's going to show you how to connect to a very deeper level within you. Now, I don't want to keep any more of your time. Get back to the interview. And again, if you're somebody that really is looking to get back in the driving seat of your life, master this monkey mind, reach your full potential and ignite that excitement, that enthusiasm and that passion for life. Make sure you awaken your spirit just below. Have an amazing day and enjoy the rest of the video. I mean, for everyone, is of course, individually, mm. you know, as Ayurveda is an individual medicine or approach to life. So we have to see everyone individual, where they struggle, where where we can get them, what really benefits them. Mm. That's why it's good to find out their dosha because you know their tendency. You know, you understand their mind, you know. Yeah, but if, if they don't, if it's really far out, like practically, what could they do today? But I can ask them question i can yeah. observe them i can ask them but we questions. can't because we're on a podcast we're on a podcast <laughs> so, like, yes so like, but we can anyway <laughs> if we could just have like five tips maybe or a couple of steps that they could do like for me i would just say straight away breathe yeah okay start to Perfect. breathe okay would you start to breathe Amazing. and connect to your breath you know this is uh, one thing put your feet on the ground go out in nature you know and yeah first start breathing i love those steps yeah so breathe and come back because then you're gonna feel the trust more not the voices yes yeah, so nature you keep that connection you stay connected to yourself you know yeah yeah you know when i was young like nature was so boring my nan would live in like two hours away in the countryside and, I, and when we'd have to go and see her I'd be like oh i didn't really yeah when i got there it was great but like the drive and then i could hit i could smell the horse manure <laughs> you know and i was just like oh i just i was like bought up on a council stage so we'd kick a football and we'd have fun and be like little shits running around the estate and then going into nature i was like this is so boring now it's hard to get me out of nature like even where we live like i just have to be by the beach yeah. or the jungle i've got a little tree i call it the wisdom tree i just sit underneath that every morning and tune in and out of a lot of people that i know um they've gone my background is like drugs and recovery they've gone in and out of all these rehabs and detoxes mm -hmm. and they've taken loads of drugs to get off of drugs mm -hmm. I've done none of that and I just sat by the trees. I've been doing it for like nearly 20 years. You know, I'm not a Buddha or a monk. I've mm. still got stuff to deal with. Like I said, thoughts were coming up the other week. I was like, wow, that's dark. They're not mine, but they're there. But when I go to nature, I feel like my grandma has just picked me up and she just cuddles me and then, and then I feel a bit of trust or then I have an insight about, oh, maybe I need to change that area of my life. Mm. And I can't really explain it, but I just feel so more connected, even sometimes more than when I'm with people. <laughs> or, you know, I just feel like nature just hugs me and it's like, they're there. And it, it definitely helped me get off of drugs 100%. Like I'd tell anybody to go out and hug a tree. Um, would you say that nature is healing? Would you say that that, or is that just me making up a story? I know. Oh, definitely. Nature is all the five elements. You Which know? are five elements? Five elements are ether, air, fire, water, and earth. What is ether? Ether is space, consciousness. Oof. 
thoughts, energy, vastness, sound. Mm. Yeah? And I think exactly like you found that nature helps you to feel safe or comfortable, mm. you know, or gives you that feeling of grounding. We all have that. And this is, when we take a moment to sit wherever that is and breathe, close your eyes if you feel anxious, keep them open. And just tap into one thing, what gives you that feeling like grandmother holds you, mm. you know, or mother holds you. If you don't have a good relationship, think about mm. someone else, you know, this, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, first experience, well, wonderful, or whatever that is. Gerbil. Yeah, pa yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, like something and then connect to this one thing. This makes you, gives you that warm, oily, mm. soft, nice, warm, holding, supported, you know, comfortable yeah. feeling. And we need to learn to anchor into that, you and know, especially that. when we are coming from addiction, mm. you know. Yeah, I've taken a lot of drugs in the past and had a crazy background. There is no better high, there is no better buzz than being connected to nature and life now. It's such a celebration and it's taken a long time to get there. Um, and again, there's still stuff going on. That's, I think that's, if you've got a brain, the brain is a thinking machine. Until your last day, you're still going to be thinking. If you've got a body, the body is a feeling machine. So we're going to have emotions and thoughts all day long. I think it's how we can maybe um, respond to that stuff or live with that or calm it down in a way. And I think for me, nature is, is my drug. Yeah. Like it's so, so healing and it's so pure and loving. Absolutely. But it's, we again, we live in a world where we're watching podcasts 24-7, we're scrolling through Instagram, we're trying to get some likes, you know, we're doing selfies, which don't get me wrong, I'm in that world as well. Um, nature's boring. Like why am I just going to sit by a tree? Or the opposite, my mum, bless her. If Mum, if you're listening, I love you. But she loves a good old chat and she's got like the TV on and then she's got the radio on and she's trying to read the paper and she's on the phone. And to me, it's so overwhelming, you know. I used to be like that. But if you turn all of that stuff off, that's scary for yes. people because there's silence. It's quietness. And in people nature, there's nothing going on. The voices are in your head yeah. and you're like, oh, whoa. That's what I also mean with numbing. We have constantly sound around us, you know, even meditating, you know, like, I mean, guided meditation are wonderful and really help. But if you really think about it, there's still something distracting you. Yeah. Your sense of hearing is still very much alert, yeah. you know, if we take some, but everyone needs their step and this is a process. Oh, 100%. Yeah, you know, we didn't get, we didn't get here, step. like yeah. just like that. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. We are still on the way. Yeah, I you slip know? up I mean, all the time. Yeah. I have my stuff also going on, yeah, you know, yeah. definitely. Um, we are not perfect because we are living here for 10 years or, you yeah. know, practicing what we're practicing. We still have to apply it. And this oh, actually, is... Sorry to interrupt on that yeah. one. I think we are perfect, but we have imperfections to work on. And society has created those imperfections. Like we are so perfect. We are God. We're divine. We're so beautiful and special. But people think that's a bit of an ego thing. I'm like, no way. Like I used to be the guy that would hate himself when he looked in the mirror. Now I'm the guy that kisses the mirror and goes, I love you. Because it's coming from the real authentic place. So I think we're so perfect. But we've got these things that, these wherever they've come from, that we need to let go of. Because that isn't us. These identities, these space suits that we're wearing. It's like well, we're so identified with the wrong thing and nobody's really talking about the divine or you're talking about Ayurveda. If I could just sum it up, when you put me in that space, I'm there. Mm -hmm. And there's no words to ever describe that, even though I'm being a bit cheeky with it. Like, it is so beautiful and pure. Like, I just wish everybody could feel that. Yeah, I wish too. Yeah. I wish too. So they need to call you and come and have a massage. <laughs> yeah. Can I add one more thing? Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to ask you a couple of... Um, quick fire questions and then okay. uh, we'll, uh, we'll let people know where they can go and visit your websites and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So to that perfection to imperfection, you know, I said perfect human being and a human being is as perfect as they can be. Mm. And you know, I mean with this, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner, but it doesn't mean I'm 100% healthy 100%, or I'm doing everything yeah. right. And I had an experience where I had a moments of uh, stronger anxiety and I shared something around this. And a very good dear friend of mine actually reacted very surprisingly with this, what? You have anxiety? Totally get you know, that. You, yeah. you, you live on a beautiful island. You live this life. You teach. Yeah. You're full energy. You're always, you know, like this. I say, yes. I'm still a human being yeah, and I have 100%. anxiety. Yeah. Yes, now I know better to deal with it, but yeah. I'm still. So that I mean with, you know, perfect, imperfect. Yeah, totally, With yeah. everything what comes there and my health, yeah. you know, 
things I struggle with yeah. or whatever, but I totally... And they're your gifts as well. The struggles are your gifts. Exactly. It's the way we framed it. Yeah. yeah, like the rock bottom or the, yeah. the eat, pray, love moment. It's like, yeah. yeah, it was horrible. I bet it was really horrible at that time, crying and stuff. But I bet you look back now and you're like, thank you so much. Yeah. Like yeah. I look back at Brett that was in prison and taking drugs and crying. I'm like, thank you, man, because this is where we are. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here, exactly. you know? Um, yeah, I love that. You're so right. I think a lot of people are surprised if I... It's because I don't, I don't, put, I don't put Instagram on and cry, and so my life, you know, I'm going through healing, yeah. and I, I, I just don't think that's the way to heal. If I'm honest, like if yeah. you're doing that, crack on. Um, yeah, the same. but I just don't think like if I need to heal and talk to somebody because I've got suicidal thoughts, I will pick up the phone. Yeah. I don't need to tell it to the or, or I don't need to take it out on everybody else throughout the day. Yeah. It's like I do you my have your shit. People yeah, and, and you, you do and your you stuff. Do, but yeah. when people hear that, oh, Brett still gets that, they're like what? You're so perfect and you're so happy and positive. I'm like, wow. Like, you, we all have stuff to work yeah, on. Like, yeah, it's exactly. like nobody, I don't think I've ever met anybody up there 24-7. Yeah, there's So I'm no, glad you shared that because, like, yeah. that's passionate for me. And now see it like this. If we would guarantee anyone or someone would come and guarantee us there's only balance. This is you do and you're only balanced. What is it? It's a straight line. Mm. What is a straight line? Death. Mm. It's always like this. Yeah. We're always waving, yeah. right? We're waving. This is what the Buddha talks a lot about, the middle way, right? Yeah. The middle path. Yeah, the yeah, middle path. Which is ideal. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, right. So let me just ask you a quick question. Again, I, I always want to keep it practical because me and you can just talk and we're out in, in, in space, which is amazing. Um, I'm at home. I want to get on this path of Ayurveda or just meditation, whatever we just spoke mm -hmm. about. What would I do? Would I go and Google something? I know you said focus on the breath. How do I kind of see if there's a wake up call something eat pray love moment happening what's my first step I think the first step would be to find someone who is an Ayurvedic practitioner or doctor mm. or, um, or you, when you say doctor not like a normal doctor like an Ayurvedic an doctor an Ayurvedic doctor okay right yeah. yeah if you want to come on this path of Ayurveda you know yeah. Ayurveda came somewhere along your line and you heard about this and said oh maybe that could resonate with me and mm. you know give me something to my life to feel better so you, you you could of course you can google and you can watch or take a course on learning the Ayurvedic principles but I think the personal connection is always better 100%. so yeah. you can find someone like me as a practitioner i'm not a doctor not yet uh, i'm a practitioner or a doctor and get a consultation mm. so go and talk to an ayurveda practitioner get a consultation share where you struggle with um and then get on your life path through advices or you know go on an ayurveda program mm. there's so many ways you could do that i think it's, it's like when you take that first step like never in a million years would i thought bringing you up going for a third eye massage would lead us to a podcast talking about it and exactly. now I'm passionate about sharing it with yeah. others and even though it was so beautiful there were some moments where I laid there my mind was so busy when you was massaging it and then I went into it so yeah. I think if you just take the first step maybe then your door will open up. Like, I don't know about you, but you take the first step and then you're like all the way here. You're like, wow. But it always does start with that initial moment, the, the wake yeah. up, right? Often I have, I observe these moments when I give Ayurvedic talks, mm. you know, like now people listen to us. Yeah. And there's some one sentence, yes. you know, I have lately yeah. I had one said, when you said Ayurveda is common sense, this like, yeah. just crack the world Ooh, open give for me. Goosebumps you again. know, something like this. And then you get curious about it. Yeah. And I have people coming to me for, I'm offering this, a free discovery chat with me or call where they can just come for 30 minutes mm. and you know we get to know each other and they sometimes don't know they don't know you know what yeah. they're coming actually with they just got inspired with something and they like my energy or whatever I think it's very important you're looking for someone you feel you feel safe with or there is a, a connection, a or, connection or a resonance yeah. you know like because when we are in a in a state where we are really struggling we need someone gives us holding yeah. guidance support you know i always say follow your goosebumps yeah follow like, your goosebumps if you absolutely feel, if it feels good and yeah. you get a lovely connection with somebody like i did with you yeah i ended up booking 10 or 20 different sessions exactly. or and, and just one more thing just to clarify before we wrap this beautiful conversation i could talk to you for ages is ayurveda is not just about a third eye massage it's exactly. um you mentioned pitta and sattva um different vata, yeah. uh, vata, what's it called pitta vata kapha the doshas okay <laughs> we'll, we'll have to bring you back on and talk about that but that's actually about like eating and like what food you should eat and again i'm not doing it any justice because i'm not clued up yeah so it's not just about the uh, the, the the experience that i had there's like a whole science behind it right it's a whole exactly. way of life yeah, this is very important to understand. So Ayurveda is a holistic way of living, which includes diet, which includes understanding yourself in totality, which understanding your mind, your emotion, how to exercise, what supplements or herbs might be good yeah. for you. You know, um, and it's not a religion. 
or it's not Nothing. a spirituality. It's and just a way of life. Exactly. Mm. And of course, treatments are in there. Mm. They have a whole a magic, you know, portfolio yeah. <laughs> of treatments. But yeah, it is no religion. Ayurveda is a medical science. There is no religion behind that. Everyone can come and benefit and implement Ayurveda in their life to their terms. Doesn't matter where they live. Yeah. They don't have to eat Indian food to practice Ayurveda. We are implementing Ayurveda there where you where you're at. Wherever you're at. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you believe in it. Amazing. So if anybody's listening right now and you're going through anything, can you feel inspired? Or there is one sentence that Nancy or I said, and you're like, oh, actually, I want to check it out. Like, Google it, find somebody. If you ever get the opportunity to do a third eye massage, like, from the bottom of my heart, it is amazing. And this beautiful song, Nancy, has got such a lovely way of, of, of sharing that and opening that space. And then you just go off and float in space and you feel high as anything. So Nancy, just to really um, let people know that they can reach out to you. Do you have an Instagram or a website? Yeah, my website is um, nancyhuttig.com. Mm -hmm. um, we'll Nancy, put all the links below. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Nancy Hudig on Instagram, Nancy Hudig Ayurveda on Facebook. So all with my name. And so. you're very approachable. So if they've got a question, they can just... Of course. Yeah, and you'll message me. Them. Yeah, message me on my website. Maybe book a free free call with me yeah nothing talk, harms nothing yeah, yeah. to lose and talk about it yeah cool yeah. nancy thank you so much let's have a coconut and i love you thank loads. you brett for having me You're it was welcome. really nice thank you Hello viewers, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm hoping that you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed making it. We love this adventure we're on, we love growing this community, and we would love you to actually help us. So I've got a favor to ask you. Make sure that you subscribe below, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and turn that notification button on, because that actually helps us with the algorithm. In other words, it's gonna help us reach more people and spread this ripple effect. And I really appreciate your time and energy for watching any video. So if you've got any comments or questions or queries, make sure you pop them in the box below. By subscribing, you are going to be one of the first people to know when we release new content. If you really want to take your journey and your growth to the next level, make sure you watch this next video and have an amazing day. Once again, thank you so much for your time and your energy. See you in the next video.